and I broke up last week, uh, so I was wondering... I'm sorry, man. You must feel awful. Oh, well, no, no, that's the thing. I, I don't really feel anything, though I, I probably should. I just feel kind of uh, numb. Uh, heartbreak's still over the counter, right? I'm out of heartbreak. What? Heartbreak never sells out. On um, Valentine's Day, it does. <laughs> Shame. Uh, I could really do for some heartbreak. So. I do have shame, actually. New shipment came in yesterday. I can get you some from the stock room if you need. No, I'm okay, honestly. Yeah. Uh, do you have any melancholy left? How about this one? Siberia 1933. That melancholy's older than you are. <laughs> Cost you extra, though. Ah, it's Valentine's Day. I'm splurging here. Yeah. <laughs> hey, kid. You see that guy? Yeah? What? I think he's been stealing deception. He looks sh shiftier than most. Uh, everyone on Deception looks shifty. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, no, but he looks shiftier than everyone else. Uh, that's impossible. Quality control makes sure there are no abnormal amounts of contaminants. Every batch has exactly the same standardized amount of shifty shiftiness. Look at that. Wasted youth spent lying and stealing. When you ought to be working! It's a damn shame. These, shouldn't you be regulating Deception anyway? He's just having a little fun. He's not really hurting anybody.
My name is Janet Valentine. I'm a productive worker at the Empath Factory on 28th Street. I'm unmarried and I have no children. You know what the problem with people these days is? They don't care about how they feel, only about how they want to feel. <laughs> That's what my dad always said to me. He was a good man, I mean the best man, and he could have never been more proud of me. You see, he always wanted me to be true to myself, no matter what the world threw at me. You see, because I am not of this world, my parents found me in a crater after a meteorite impact. My skin's actually green, and no one has seen the chameleon out of it, except for my girlfriend, Sally. She got kidnapped by Stratagem last week. But I was just like, BOW! A museum! And they found Stratagem's face two miles away. And then Sal and I had a duel of a different type, if you know what I mean. <laughs> when she does that little thing with her hands, you know? Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> Love is a bottle of little white pills. I should write that into a song. I'm a rock star, you know, top selling album on all the charts. I'll never forget when my dad gave me my first guitar. The Chameleons are the best band of all time. I'm on lead guitar with Sal on the bass and Jim on the drums. Wow! What's her problem? <laughs> she reminds me of my dad when he kicked me out of the house a few years ago. I've been crashing at my friend Sal and Jim's place recently, and it's been a bit awkward, but hey, it beats Jefferson Park. <laughs> Although I guess the apartment's mine now, since Sal OD'd on Euphoria a month ago and made Jim take a shortcut off the roof. <laughs> I'm like a chameleon. Sometimes I like to pretend I'm not even here. <laughs> So your day is going to go like this. Take some anxiety in the morning when you first get up, maybe around 7 or 8. Uh, try syncing it up with your morning cup of coffee to uh, help you remember. Uh, take a boredom on your ride to work, and irritation if Jim play, plays that music that he knows you hate. <laughs> Keep your doses of boredom consistent over the post you know, of the course of the morning, oh, once every 45 minutes or so, intersperse with uh, contemplation and, and distraction to keep you nice and uniformly mediocre. Uh, when the time of your lunch break rolls around, treat yourself to a relief or maybe even a happiness. Uh, don't worry, they're fast acting, they will wear off by the time your break is over. Push through these next few hours. Don't actually take an enthusiasm. It'll destabilize your system and pop a fatigue as you clock out. Uh, watch a few episodes of whatever the hell is popular. Uh, don't worry, the, the numbness and uncertainty you took a few minutes earlier will prevent you from actually paying any attention. And you'll fall asleep to depression. <laughs> Got all that? Oh.
And I know you're not into these kind of things, but... <laughs> I think I love you, Mr. Hart. What you got there? Something for your girl? I don't know. I can't for the life of me remember where I got this from. These days, anyone can have happiness. For $20, you can get contentment at any corner pharmacy. Peace of mind is as cheap as a slice of pizza. Love is a pack of cigarettes. What we don't have, what none of us can have, is passion. Above our heads, in their manners and estates, the rich get to experience depression, anger, fury, and their kids play with angst and envy, and their dogs lap up resentment with their water. The empath corporations have just restricted the prices of these so-called negative emotions to keep them a privilege for the rich. Outrage was once a defender of the poor. Solace, melancholy was the solace of the worker. They were cheap and readily available. They were the driving force of reform. Resolve made us firm in our determination to succeed, and we did succeed. Now the cost of our lifeblood is beyond what we could have ever imagined. They keep us happy and complacent, prevented from change by the inaccessibility of passion. Even the anger with which I speak to you now has been bought at great expense, further lining their pockets. It is not for the empath corporation to decide who gets access to a full range of emotions. We demand and deserve all the complexities of the human condition, regardless of effect. We live in a time of peace a time of happiness and prosperity. But without strife, we will never have meaning. The time to frolic in fairyland is over. It's time to stand on our own in the rain, and by doing so, we will truly bask in the sunlight. 